Hello YouTube. What you're looking at right here is a netbook. It's an EPC 1001HA and it is the subject of today's video. However, I want to talk about the netbook as a whole uh, for a little first. So, the netbook was a class of laptops. They were pretty much ultra portable laptops that were very popular between somewhere around 2007 to about 2011-ish. And um, they were primarily meant for light tasks like web browsing, emailing, and word processing, that kind of stuff, and on the road, because they were very light, so you could just put it in a bag, because they were very small as well, and take it with you wherever you needed it. And that was very nice. However, they were very underpowered, they usually didn't have a lot of RAM, and uh, therefore they weren't exactly fast. They were just very basic computers for a very basic price. So, price tag to match, you could say. This one is no exception. This is an ASUS EPC 1001HA. It's somewhere from around 2008. It's featuring the Intel 945 chipset, so it should be about 2007, 2008-ish. So that would fit. It has an Intel Atom N270 processor, which was the most popular Atom processor at the time. And this one has one gigabyte of memory from the factory. That's already a pretty decent spec for a netbook of this era. Because the first netbooks were actually smaller, they had typically 7-inch, 8-inch screens, sometimes they had 10, but that was pretty massive. Uh, but they came with the original netbook processor, which was the Intel Celeron M900 MHz. Now that was painful. Now this one isn't that much better. This is a single-core hyper-threading with 1.6 GHz worth of clock speed, but it's pretty doggone slow and underpowered. So that's why they came with Windows XP at first. Windows XP wasn't even allowed to be sold anymore around 2008-ish, but they decided to just ship with XP anyway because Vista would run like trash and Windows 7 wasn't around yet, so there wasn't Windows 7 starter either. So then there's the screen. Of course, because they are very small, the displays are very small to match as well. They came in 7 to 11, 12 inch form factors ranging from very low resolutions of like, I think about 800 by 600 sometimes, or, or the widescreen or the widescreen equivalent of that, to about 1366 by 768 on the 12 inch models. This was the most common form factor, 10.1 inch, with a resolution of 1024 by 600. That vertical resolution is really what uh, is hurting these machines a lot. Well, what doesn't hurt them, I guess, is a better question. So let's boot, let's boot this one up and take a look at the BIOS settings. It's, this one is running DDR2 memory, one gigabyte of it. The very first netbooks came with 512 megabytes typically that you could upgrade to a gig. And uh, this one can be upgraded to two gigabytes. Same goes for, well, no, actually this one cannot be upgraded beyond one gigabyte. The later DDR3 models could be upgraded to two gigabytes. They're a little bit more useful. They also came with dual-core hyper-threaded uh, Atom processors that were somewhat less shit. But at least it did come with some very standard features we take for granted these days, such as serial ATA with AHCI support, USB 2.0, of course, wireless N is included. We have a webcam if you so desire, onboard high-definition audio, and all that good stuff. Of course, we do not have an optical drive, which was a hassle back in the day, but it will boot from USB just fine. This netbook is pretty much in pristine condition, it's pretty much new. The hard drive has about 70 hours on it, so this machine was barely ever used. One thing I will say though about this particular one, it has a very nice keyboard. It is very small, so that takes some getting used to, but the key travel is pretty good. The tactile feel is pretty good, definitely better than most laptops that I've typed on uh, in the past couple of years. I think my favorite laptop keyboard to this day is still, uh, oddly enough, not a MacBook keyboard, but actually the original keyboard that came with the uh, Dell Latitude uh, series, like the uh, 6400 and 6410. The original Dell keyboards and those, the non-backlit ones, they are really nice to type on. Really nice. I think that's still my favorite laptop keyboard ever. And I think the second best keyboard that I've ever typed on would be a uh, 
a Retina MacBook, uh, MacBook Pro keyboard. So the later revision. Not the uh, MacBook Pro uh, Retina uh, butterfly keyboards. I haven't typed on those, so I can't really uh, get a proper opinion on those. But this one is a good, uh, good third for now, I suppose. So what I'm running on it right now is uh, Lubuntu 16.04, pretty reasonable, recent version. It supports all the hardware of this machine out of the box, and uh, it is the most up-to-date operating system that will run properly on this. I have tried Windows 10. It was an utter nightmare. It locked up at the first attempt I tried to actually install some drivers for it, because that needed to uh, to get an updated video driver, and I needed to... Uh, uh, correct the activation at the time just because I didn't want to bother with having to find a key for it and because it was just going to be for test purposes anyway so I don't really feel like wasting a key just for a test machine but that's fine that's just fine Windows 8.1 I tried that as well ran okay-ish didn't really put too much time into, into it Windows 7 ran okay until we started doing anything and then it would just pretty much lock up and uh, yeah, Windows XP ran great, of course. That's the original operating system. Came with XP Home Service Pack 2. And that was okay. But it's old. It's really old. And it's pretty much useless these days. I mean, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't feel safe just having to browse on that. So right here we have Ubuntu, like I said. Everything is working great. You can browse the web. We actually have two finger scrolling, as you can see here on the screen. So that's pretty cool. The only thing is I can't really zoom into the, on the display a hell of a lot. Let's actually give it a shot. All right, about 2x zoom. There we go. I don't think my uh, keys are working, the odd keys. Okay, they do, but... I guess this is looking sort of acceptable on camera. We'll go with this. Yeah, you can go away now. Thanks. All right, well, let's just open up the website. There is no internet connection. No, because I'm such a doofus that I didn't actually connect it to the Wi-Fi. So let's do that right now. Authentication required. Uh, yeah, let's fill that in. There we go, connect. All right, we're connected. Let's try that again. No, get in my face. Resolving hosts, it's still working on his DNS there. All right, there we go. That wasn't too bad. Uh, nope, no translations. Thank you very much. This website is in Dutch. I'm pretty fluent in that. <laughs> I should be, I suppose. You know, it's a bit laggy. Probably because of all the ads on websites these days. No, I'm like, no, no let's not do Facebook. <laughs> That's a bad idea. Let's go to the obligatory CNN.com test. Pretty much one of the heaviest websites on the web. And it shows. It takes a while. This is the model, most lightweight Linux flavor that you can run on, on a machine like this that's actually still usable. I mean, some people will be like, well, just put Puppy Linux on it, or D DSL, it's, it's even lighter. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's complete utter trash, so no, I'm not going to do that. This is actually a fully-fledged desktop operating system, just with a lighter skin on it. That's optimized for low-memory, low-power machines. So I prefer this. Then again, I still prefer uh, Xubuntu and uh, just running plain Debian over uh, Lubuntu typically, but the interface is getting nicer with every release, so I suppose that's pretty cool too. So that's working okay. Let's watch a YouTube video. Let's see how that goes.
I'm pretty sure that this onboard graphics GMA950 does not do H.264 so there's no point in actually like installing a plugin like H.264 or Fire or whatever what should we watch well just let's go to uh, hardware unboxed let's see let's see what Steve is cooking up today 1070 Ti. Let's put that in here. Let's connect that to the internal uh, PCI Express uh, Wi-Fi card module port, whatever thingy. Welcome back to Hardware Unboxing. Today we are going to unbox the NVIDIA GTX 1070. We're really enjoying this in nice, nice low standard definition, and it's lacking a lot. We're running currently at 480p, and it can do that if you're actually interfacing with it. Let's do 360p. This is pretty much 30 FPS, I suppose. Alright. So there's that. So YouTube, it doesn't do particularly well anymore. It's almost as bad as the uh, as your typical PowerPC Mac these days. That will barely do 240p, maybe 360 if you've got a G5. But you know, it's, that, that's actually a nice. That should be a nice video, I guess. It should make a really nice video. Adam versus PowerPC G5. Who would win? <laughs> Just an average usability tests. That would imply that I have to actually get Linux running on uh, PowerPC G5 just to make it a fair com comparison. I'm not sure if there's still a 32-bit uh, PowerPC binary, or, well not binary, uh, version of Lubuntu 16.04. I think there's 14.04. I tried that on the on the Mac Mini G4, but that didn't work too well. Well, LibreOffice works just fine though. Absolutely beautiful. So I suppose you could use this for regular web browsing, just a lot of web browsing, no video or whatever. That seems to be working just fine. And trust me, this is a hell of a lot more responsive than Windows 7, 8, or 10 that are on this machine. So I guess this is pretty much the best netbook operating system you can currently install on one of these. I think that's a good point to end this video and just to talk a little bit more about uh, these old netbooks, what I think about them. Because honestly, the main question here is, are these machines obsolete now, 10 years after they first started appearing? In my opinion, yeah, they are pretty much close to reaching obsolescence, just like the uh, PowerPC laptops and Macs and whatever. Uh, are obsolete now. They they most definitely are. But uh, these machines are pretty much obsolete these days as well. I've had more luck running Pentium M processors uh, with modern version of Windows than I've had on this, which actually has a SATA hard drive, no less. It's a pretty zippy drive too. But even fast storage cannot compensate for the lack of power the Atom has. This Intel Atom, with its hyper-threading and 1.6 GHz clock speed, has a much lower TDP, yes, but it's also a worse performer than a typical Pentium M that came out two to three years before it. And I think that's really a sign on the wall that these netbooks are now pretty much obsolete. It might be fun to play around with or to just take with you if you need to uh, do some quick work, for instance, do some networking troubleshooting or whatever just uh, plug in your ethernet cable into the machine just go open a browser go into the console and whatnot and do your work there that should it should be fine for that it's still an ultra portable laptop that you can just throw around but it's just not really usable anymore for everyday tasks it's really pretty long in the tooth by now and uh, I think aside from putting it into your collection to portray the era I think there's not really much point in getting a netbook these days anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video though, I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.